everyone, my name is Evan and I like to make stop motion dinosaurs and monsters and in this YouTube video today we'll be adding clay to Titanus Doug I say. And as I sculpt away at this movie monster today we'll be learning more about Godzilla's evolution while I craft away at this hollow earth monster today I do say. On part two of the Titanus Doug project today, we'll start off with some painting, I say, and once that's done, it's on to some plasticine sculpting fun. Where one might say we're making a cute chubby movie monster today, I do say. And as I make this hollow earth monster today, we'll be learning more about Godzilla's evolution today. In the MonsterVerse, we've been introduced to a few different Godzilla incarnations, including a few relatives as well as evolutionary offshoots. So let's begin with number one, the Fetodons. The CG artists originally referred them as scaly quadrupeds, and were designed to resemble Godzilla in some shape or form. How? Well, it was a suggestion by Adam Wingard that these creatures should have scaly properties and similar facial features to the Godzilla species. These artists went as far as giving this guy a spiky back these small spikes resemble Godzilla's dorsal plates and could have been used as a warning display for other species or in some special occasions monarch aircraft that get too close. In the official art book we read that basically and I quote these are offshoots of the evolutionary branch that gave birth to the Godzilla species. That's right everyone by definition these guys could have been distant cousins or perhaps ancestors of the Gojira species we know and love today. So how big were these? I gave a rough estimate in part one but we'll give a little bit more of a breakdown in part two here. By comparing the rock creature to humans and comparing the height proportions to this particular monster and to Kong, it's possible that these creatures could have grown up to 90 or 100 feet in height. Although initially Titanus Doug doesn't look that big, one can expect that these giant lizards would definitely be one of the top predators in their domain. And since they share some similar features to larger lizards we know today, we can assume these were apt swimmers, capable of swimming at fast speeds similar to the next kaiju we're going to talk about. Godzilla. We're gonna go over to two of the members of the Godzillas that we know of. The G-Man as well as probably some lesser known character, known as Dagon. Or sometimes referred to as 5146 Adam. That's not very appealing. Anyways, many people believe that Dagon was Godzilla's ancestor. However, he wouldn't actually be Godzilla's ancestor if he was around while Godzilla was still alive. Now, let me explain. We know the G-Man has been around for millions of years. But since the recording of Dagon in Phoenician records, it's clear that both of these monsters were around at the same time. Phoenician civilization dates back as far as 1500 BC, which is only a mere 3,500 years ago. Meaning there could have been many Godzilla species roaming around at some point. I'll get to what happens to them later. From the descriptions I have seen on these Phoenician tablets, Dagon was probably not as big as the Godzilla we know today, mainly because his dorsal plates look very similar to the back on Godzilla 2014. Dagon's posture is a bit more hunched over and he's greener in appearance. Definitely not as built as the 2019 Godzilla or the 2024 one. This suggests that it was a much younger Godzilla specimen. It's more than likely that the younger Godzilla specimens had a tougher time growing up than the more mature Godzillas. Remember, these had some dangerous opponents going around. Especially the Mutos, a pair of these could have easily brought down a younger Godzilla. But a pair is not as dangerous as a Muto Prime. Equipped with all sorts of weapons to bring down a Godzilla. Which is what exactly happened to Dagon. So it's safe to assume that the rest of the Godzilla species that were alive many millennia ago were wiped out by the Mutos. Except one, the Godzilla we know today. Well, maybe not exactly at this point. Just know during this video I'm referring to the 2014 and 2019 Godzilla. That being said, let's rewind back to the 1900s, where the G-Man woke up to a, well, very much different environment than what he was used to millions of years ago. The Atomic Age was born. Between 2014 and 2019, the constant levels of radiation led up to a much more rapid evolutionary development. For the G-Man's body, the same would have happened to Dagon, 
But as mentioned previously, he died before the radiation levels on the surface could get close to the levels in the hollow earth. Now, let's talk dorsals. While it is true that the battle with the Mortal Prime had something to do with the dorsals changing shape, this is not the complete explanation. These dorsals would have changed shape either way once the Godzilla reaches a certain point of maturity. How do we know this now? Well, let's look back at the scene in Godzilla vs. Kong when he first gets his axe. This axe strongly resembles the G-Man's dorsals. But we know that this plate did not come from Godzilla, it did come from a already mature Godzilla. This axe blade is pretty big, similar in size to what Godzilla has on his back. This means Godzilla's in the Hollow Earth were capable of growing this size due to the energy in the Hollow Earth, which was just as strong if not stronger than the levels on the surface. Godzilla 2019 is approximately the second largest Godzilla now in the MonsterVerse, measuring in at 393 feet in height with a weight of 99,000 tons. Now a rhetorical question, can he grow even larger? Yes, yes he can. So, let's talk about the next and possibly largest Gojira specimen. Mega Gojira. There is a scene in Godzilla vs. Kong where Kong is seen pulling a skull out of the ground. Although this doesn't look too much like a Godzilla skull, it's likely a relative to Godzilla, similar to the Fetodonts except much bigger. In the official novelization, Eileen Andrews observed these skeletons from the heaves. These in her mind were very similar to the Godzilla species. She also mentions that these were very similar to the finds found in the Philippines, referring to Dagon's skeleton. So what is this thing? This is just a theory. A film theory, but it's likely, like the Pedodonts, that this is an offshoot evolutionary tree that gave birth to the perfected Godzilla. You can tell it's a relative by the protruding canines that are discreetly present in all of Godzilla's relatives, including the Pedodonts. And yes, they are present in Godzilla as well, especially the new evil version, but we'll probably talk about him a little bit more in part 3. To find out how big this animal was, we need to know or make an educated guess on the corporal shape of this creature. Given the fact that this monster would have been simply massive, it would probably also walk on all fours, so it would be a quadruped similar to Titanus Doug, but spend the other half of their time walking on their hind legs. Almost like a hybrid of both Titanus Doug and Godzilla. This animal would be slow, but powerful. With similar features both found in Godzilla and the Thetodonts. So did it have atomic breath capabilities? Probably not. A animal this large with atomic breath capabilities would destroy this place in seconds. But it didn't, probably because it couldn't. Whereas a smaller Godzilla was able to blast completely through it while standing on the Earth's crust. Even without this ability, the proportions of this animal's skull only means this could have been one of the largest titans we have ever seen. If the G-Man ever grows this large, he would probably lose the capability to move and fight as well as he does now. That being said, the Godzilla species is a product of a refined evolutionary process, producing a kaiju with the right size, weight, and capabilities to make this the most powerful titan in the MonsterVerse, aka long live the king. In review, we learnt the Phenodonts, Godzilla, and this large unnamed species, otherwise dubbed as Mega Godzilla, are all in the same family tree. We also have learnt that the Godzilla species evolves over time depending on their environment, and could grow to larger proportions. Or we already kind of know that actually. Thanks to GXK, I do say. More on that Godzilla in part 3, I do say. And finally, because there are different offshoots of this genus, it's more than likely there are plenty other Godzilla relatives to help fill in those evolutionary gaps. Do you think we'll ever see any of these other Godzilla species in a potential monster film? Now it should be mentioned we already do know what Godzilla evolves into in the future, so we're talking about some perhaps lesser known monsters. So let me know in the comments below. I kind of want to see what ideas you guys could come up with to fill in these evolutionary gaps, so if you come up with an original monster, it might be kind of cool to discuss that. And well, if you have a request for another movie monster you would like to see me make in the future, be sure to comment that as well. Now, if you're one of those people that think my channel is very underrated, you can support it today easily by smashing that like button as hard as Doug if he sat on one of those rock creatures. Pfft. It's a couple seconds out of your life to just let me know that you appreciate all the hard work and effort that goes into making this content and these movie monsters. And if you're new here and, well, made it this far and enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any of my new videos. Considering 90% of you aren't subscribed, that would make a big difference for this little channel. I would definitely appreciate it, and just for everyone who is currently subscribed, I just want you to know that I appreciate your support 
vastly. Anyway, it's time for the build rundown. So the materials used during part two today. A lot of brown paint, I say, because we had to paint all those spikes today. Which honestly wasn't that bad in retrospect. It was a little bit of work, but it definitely is nowhere near as painful as Godzilla. That being said, we still have a lot of osteoderms to make for part three. There are some oven baked clay used for those tail spikes, one could say. But the biggest amount of clay used today was plaster scene clay to make our king chubby Dougie, I do say. <coughs> uh, well, that sounds kind of wrong. Maybe I should delete that. Nah, I'm gonna leave it. Apart from my odd innuendo today, I hope to see you all in part three, I do say. Where one could say we'll be finishing off King Doug, I say, where we'll be adding in the final layers of clay and all those fine details along the way. So be sure to have your post notifications turned on today so you don't miss any of the daily short updates, I do say, because part three will soon be on the way. Oh yes, who's a cute little chubby Dougie? Until next time, folks. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end of the video. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if anyone any rate that's enough for me. Till next time, take it easy.